Believe it or not, the most popular search term in art in French language is artwork for my salon. When a collector purchases a piece of artwork, there's more than just love at first sight. Their decisions might be influenced by some factors that you, the artist, may have overlooked. When I just started this project, I met a very popular local artist in a small town in Spain. He was fairly excited to work with me after hearing what I have to offer. I plan to sell him in a partner gallery in Paris. You know that street artists often paint those walls black before putting colors on them, so that when light shines on the walls, the color really pop. In order to maximize his chance of selling in the art gallery in Paris, I gave him two personal advice. Number one, reduce the size of the painting from two meter by two meter to one meter by one meter. Number two, reduce the amount of black pigment in the background. He got really fired up and told me, you know what, this is my business, it's my art, and you have no say in this. Oh well, it starts to sound familiar, and I think that I should write a book called How Not to Talk to Artists. Certainly, this artist has a really good point, because art is his freedom, and he has the right to paint and express whatever he wants. But if he wants to sell his work in a gallery in Paris, he needs to really know and consider what the Parisians want. Number one, size matters. Parisians often live in these very old buildings, in you know, small apartments, and no elevator. It is very difficult to transport large canvas into their small homes. Number two, color matters. As you know, Paris is not the most sunny destination in Europe. They have only 51 days of strong sunlight each year. So the rest of the day, they face very gray, depressive skies. And now, they have to put a black canvas in their salon? Please, give them a break. So if you put yourself in the shoes of a collector, you know, then maybe you find those advice not as offensive as, as it may sound. For any business, customer is everything. Without a customer, you don't have a business. You may not want to admit, in the very competitive art market today, no matter how talented and special you are, your artworks are substitutable with the ones of other artists. So why should the collectors buy your art, not others? It's about occupying your niche, provide a unique value proposition, and really understand your customers. It's knowing and offering what they want in a way that others can't. For many of you, art is an act of freedom, and it inherently rejects money. The market wants what it wants. I'm not saying that you should offer whatever the market wants, but whatever you are willing to deliver. Artistic freedom is like light. It travels and travels and travels in this dark universe, and boom, it hits something that reflects the light. And the something that reflects the light is your market. I'm sure that you want people to see the light through your work, right? I also have heard artists saying, you know what, I don't want my work to be sold in the gallery because it's not meant for the market, because I'm only interested in sponsored projects from the Minister of Culture. I found this institutional elitist um, opinion very common among European artists. And this kind of project is called in French, marché public, the public market. It has its own set of rules and preferences and constraints. You won't be able to live on your own terms in this case. Having public clients means you're having fewer clients because there are only so many institutions out there in your area, in your province, in your country, or, and in the world. And usually they have a limited budget. So by limiting yourself in the public market, you are giving up a big cake out there and you cannot release your full potential. Personally, I believe that the free market is still a battle worth fighting. If you find it hard to understand what your collectors want, then I suggest conduct a market research like those marketeers. Don't feel embarrassed to ask so many questions to strangers because you are not alone in this. The marketeers do it all the time. You can do either a quantitative research or qualitative research, or maybe a little bit of both. If you have a social media account with a few thousand followers, for example, share a survey monkey and collect data. 
The more data you have, the more reliable the results are. If you are outgoing, go to an art fair near you. Find works of other artists with similar level and style. Stand in and see who checks out the prices of this artwork. Here you go, your target customer. Do an in-depth interview and find out who she is, what she likes, and which school did she go. Show your artwork to her and ask her about her opinion. And listen very, very carefully to her feedback. You may say, wait a second, isn't my client the galleries here? So the question is, does the gallery buy the works in bulk and then sell it to whomever they want at whatever price they want? If the answer is no, then they are not your customers. They are your intermediates, they are your dealers, they are your partners. And the customers are the one who pays the real money, right? So they're the collectors here and they're the ones that you should prioritize. Running a gallery is costly. So trust me, the galleries care a lot more about how their customers think than you do. If you don't care about what the collectors want, the galleries are not going to want to work with you because then you are not fighting on the same battlefront as they do. In the case, if you don't want to work with galleries and you want to sell the work directly you know, to the Parisians in this case, you can. You can achieve this by selling on your own website or through online marketplaces, which generally have a lower cut than a gallery. Check out articles on customer acquisition. Learn about how to identify different acquisition channels and save money on acquisition costs. What are the most lucrative opportunities? Can you scale those? Customers change, the trends change. Refresh your style, you know, mesh up with something new and keep a good balance between your visual identity and new explorations, between what pleases you and what pleases your customers. Have you really thought about what your collectors want? What is your bottom line in adopting your work to the market? Tell me what you think in the comment below. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.